So those of you who've been following the channel for a while now will know we've covered a lot of older cars on the channel this year, but I still think every now and then it's important to look at the newer stuff just to see what's going on in the markets, which is why today we've got this Mercedes GLA 250e plug-in hybrid to have a look over, see what it's all about, and also just to look at how the market is changing. Now we know of course people's preferences on what their cars look like and what sort of duties they perform has changed an awful lot in recent times and we're seeing more and more of these cars that are kind of into that SUV or crossover type category. The previous generation of the GLA was actually a much smaller and, and lower and kind of just more compact design and really it had a lot more in common with the A-Class at the time. Whereas this new GLA has, as you can see, been lifted up quite a lot. It's been blown out in its proportions a lot. And I think the looks are really gonna be a little bit divisive. I'm not really a massive fan of cars getting bigger and more bulbous. I don't really understand why that needs to be the case, because uh, often you don't really get that many benefits from that, um, apart from it being just less practical. But you know, I think Mercedes have done a good job in styling this car, given how much it's grown, and yet still has quite compact proportions, which can obviously make it a bit challenging sometimes to still make the car look good. But again, it just looks like a really high-end quality product, which is of course what Mercedes is known for. So the styling on the side profile of the car is obviously a little bit different to the front in terms of what's going on. I actually think there's some pretty large expanses of body panel here that they could have done a bit more with just to make it a little bit more exciting. But, you know, I think overall it's decent. One thing I do really like is these wheels. I think they they look great. I love the color scheme on them. And actually, Mercedes always seem to do good brakes is one thing I noticed. We've got drilled rotors on the front, which is pretty cool, and a nice big caliper with Mercedes branding on it. It's just nice. We've got a nice little EQ power sort of badge on here as well just to show that this car is obviously plug-in hybrids but yeah it just overall I think it looks decent um, you know it's quite difficult I think to make these cars um, look as good as maybe the previous ones did when there's such a demand for them to grow and become bigger and yeah just bigger in their dimensions but yeah overall I think it looks pretty decent so what do we think of the rear of the car then I think perhaps there's a couple of bits here that I'm not so keen on. One thing I do find is it seems to have quite an abrupt kind of flat finish to it. I think the sloped window definitely helps with that, makes it kind of break up the rear end a little bit. I do like the tail lights. I think they're really good and they're quite subtle badging as well. One of the disappointing things, which all manufacturers seem to be doing at the minute, is fake exhausts. The rears are just completely blocked off. I don't really understand why you would do that. Um, I assume there's a, another exhaust somewhere underneath there somewhere, but yeah, I mean, Maybe just put the actual exhaust through there. That would be better, right? But who knows? So yeah, overall, I think it looks good, but uh, the rear, I think, is probably a little bit more divisive. Now, as I mentioned, this car is, of course, a hybrid, which means it's got a petrol engine and an electric motor. Without getting into the politics of electric vehicles, obviously a car sort of type that is becoming ever more popular, sales are going through the roof of those cars. And yeah, I mean, there's a lot of big questions about whether they are as sustainable as people think they are, whether they make sense, whether they're practical. I'm not gonna go into that too much in this, in this video because we have covered some of those topics a bit. But I personally think hybrids strike a bit of a balance between your old internal combustion engine cars and the new electric vehicles. And really some of the sort of disadvantages of electric vehicles are probably mitigated somewhat by hybrids. So this car has a 1.3 litre turbocharged four cylinder engine paired with an electric motor. This particular car is all wheel drive. So that power has been distributed through all four wheels. But the combined output is somewhere around 220 horsepower with around about 100 horsepower coming from the electric motor. Obviously having that electric motor means it's got plenty of torque. In fact, this car actually has 332 pound feet of torque, which is a really big number. But all that extra drivetrain or the battery, they add up in weight. Now this car actually weighs 1,775 kilograms, which is an awful lot. You know, as soon as you start getting onto that two ton kind of realm, it is quite crazy to think about considering the size of this car. Um, but that is just the way the industry is going. So 220 horsepower, 1700 kilograms. It, it is a decent power to weight ratio, nothing amazing, but it certainly does the job. This car will do 0 to 60 in around about 7.1 seconds and has a top speed of 137 miles an hour. So that is really decent. And 
perfectly acceptable to anyone really that's going to be doing things like commuting and longer distance drives in this car which is really where I think it's geared to but we will get into that in a bit more detail. Now some of you might be wondering okay so it's got electric battery what sort of range can we expect from that? Well this actually does have a full electric mode which means that you can drive around in full electric without any sort of input from the internal combustion engine which is a really nice feature actually I think particularly for around town and in that mode you can do around about 40 miles of range which is very impressive because if you were say commuting to a place of work or you're just running around doing errands you could be on fully electric power which I think is actually a really useful sort of practicality point but of course having that electric motor input on the engine as well you can achieve some very impressive mpg i think the quoted figure on this is somewhere around 200 mpg obviously sometimes those figures have to be taken with a bit of a pinch of salt uh, they're done in very specific circumstances but just having that electric motor there does certainly help this car achieve very very good fuel economy So I thought it's also important to look at the practicality of such a car because that's probably what a lot of people are buying this car for and I think it actually scores very well. You can see in the boot here there is actually loads of space. It's very deep and goes back a long way. The only thing is, of course, with this car being a lot bigger and a lot taller is the actual boot opening is quite high up. So you do have quite a sort of lift to get stuff actually into the boot space. But yeah, overall, I think there's plenty of space in there. The seats do drop down as well and this parcel shelf will come out again. So it's really really practical in terms of just being using this as a daily driver for example so jumping in the rear of this car then the first thing i actually noticed is the door opening into the rear seat is actually quite small and again that's just because of this compact design i think but to be honest it is still pretty easy to get in and out i'm about five foot ten plenty of knee room back here plenty of headroom it's a very spacious interior actually uh, you could probably fit two adults back here maybe three at a push but yeah, it generally feels pretty comfortable. I could definitely see myself doing quite long distances in the back of here in, in a lot of comfort, to be honest. So moving to the front seat then, I think we can really get a proper sense of the interior here. And this is where Mercedes always scores very well, in my opinion. They just do interiors really well. And even at certain price points, they're still able to make the car feel very premium. Now, this car isn't cheap. As spec, it's probably around about 43,000, maybe a little bit over that but yeah it certainly feels like a very very premium interior i love the different use of materials and the way they're contrasting this sort of like leather steering with the, the kind of gloss finish trim and there's even some sort of carbon fiber effect bits as well which i'll show you in some b-roll but yeah it's just it's very comfortable and it just it feels like you get good value for money as far as the interiors go and mercedes have always had a reputation for building quality cars and i think this car really upholds that we've got of course lots of screens you know what it's like these days but Actually, they seem to work pretty well. One thing I do like in particular is the actual dials and the cluster itself is still in a bit of an analog kind of design. I'll show you what I mean by that, but it essentially just means it's easy to read. A lot of these digital clusters you see these days are very kind of difficult on the eye and you can't necessarily see where the rev counter is or read it very easily. But yeah, this is nice, crystal clear, you know, totally obvious what the information is trying to show you. Another thing I like as well is these vents that sort of look like a turbine of a jet engine or something. They're just a very cool looking design. Again, just added to the premium feel of this car. We've got fully electric adjustable seats in here, which just makes it nice and easy to get a good driving position. And actually, having said that, you can get a decent driving position despite the car being pretty high up. So yeah, really nice place. Um, I could definitely see myself again being pretty comfortable in here over long distances. So what do we think in summary then? I think there's quite a lot to consider with this car actually and I definitely think there is a very solid market for the hybrids. Personally I think they actually make a lot more sense at the minute than a lot of the electric cars do because you don't rely on the infrastructure. This can be charged at home in literally a couple of hours and you've got 40 miles of range and when the battery runs out you've got a petrol engine which does great fuel economy so it just makes total sense. You're not restricted by the range issue which always seems to come up with the electric vehicles. Yes, it's a lot of money to spend on a car. You know, £40,000 is no joke, but then, you know, there's a lot of very attractive financing and leasing deals out there which can make these cars much more affordable. Of course, let me know what your thoughts are on this car in the comments below as well. And perhaps you even own one, perhaps you've got a really good experience with it. I actually know the owner of this car. I know he's had a fantastic experience with it and it's been brilliant for commuting, for trips all over the, all over the county even, because it will go so far on that electric range. And yeah, really easy to live with. 
as well as doing fantastic fuel economy. So I think it just makes total sense as a daily or a commuter, or perhaps even a long distance driver as well. So yeah, that's gonna conclude our video on this car. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe if you wanna see more videos. Thanks very much for watching. Thank you.